Did you know it's possible to record Super Collider's output and render that sound as an audio file? It's a useful trick, especially if you're the kind of person who likes using Super Collider for generating sound, but prefers a DAW for assembly and fine tuning. So let's say you've got some code that you're happy with, like this here. Now, one of the simplest ways to turn this code into an audio file is to run uh, s.makeWindow, which gives you a little status window for the audio server. Click the record button, then run your code, let it play for as long as you like, stop the sound, and then click that same button again to stop recording. When you stop recording, the file path appears in the post window, and you can also get the location of your recording directory by evaluating platform.recordingsdir. So navigate to the folder, and here's our new audio file. We can open it up in a waveform editor, and there it is. Inevitably, with this approach, there's going to be some time that passes between pressing the record button and running your code. And that's why we have this chunk of silence at the beginning here. Now, of course, you can trim this off using editing software. But if this bothers you, you can handle the recording process using code instead. All you have to do is wrap your sound code in a routine with dot .play at the end and put s.record at the beginning of the routine. Now, when we call s.record, the server does a tiny bit of setup in preparation for writing audio into a file. And that takes a small amount of time. So it's kind of necessary, actually, to include a short wait between these two steps. It's hard to say precisely how much time is needed, but I find that 0.02 seconds usually works pretty well. When you've had enough, stop the sound, and then evaluate s.stoprecording. Once again, here is our recording, and it looks like we've got roughly 0.01 seconds of silence at the beginning, so that's pretty good. It's probably good enough, but you know, go ahead and mess with this 0.02 value if you feel like it. The default format for these files is 32-bit float AIFF format two channels, and you can get these settings by evaluating s.rec sample format, uh, s.rec header format, and s.rec channels. Now, in many cases, these settings are fine, but if you'll need to change something, most likely it'll be downgrading the bit depth to something lower than 32, because most but not all audio software can read 32-bit audio files. To drop the bit depth, set this expression equal to the string int24 or int16, depending on what bit depth you want. And similarly, you can set the file format to WAV, like this. Though I don't think I've ever encountered a situation where WAVE and AIFF are not interchangeable. So let's run this routine again. Stop the sound and stop the recording. So here's our file, and we can see that it is a 24-bit WAVE file. S.record actually takes a few arguments that can make this process a little easier. Two in particular I want to bring to your attention. The first argument, path, is a string representing where you want to put the new file, which is nice for being able to store the recording somewhere else. And the last argument, duration, is the desired length of the recording in seconds. And this is nice because you no longer have to stop the recording process manually, and you'll actually see recording stopped in the post window when it's finished. And on the desktop, here's my test folder with my sound.wave right in there. Uh, something to watch out for, you want to make sure this path is unique each time you run it. Otherwise, you're going to end up overwriting a previous audio file with a newer one, and you won't get a warning message or anything like that, and the old recording will be unrecoverable. For more info, check out the server help file under the section titled Recording Support. And related to this, the help file for Recorder, which is the actual class that does the work in the background when we call s.record. So that's it for this tutorial. I want to give a special shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Huge thanks. You all are so awesome. And uh, to everyone, I hope this is helpful. And thanks for watching.